Cedar Crest class of 2021. I'm so excited to be with you. I love and know so many of you and there are a lot of my heroes in this class. I thought I'd start out today by telling an embarrassing story about myself. I feel like those are always good to warm up with. I have done a lot of embarrassing things for my children over the years. I guess I love them or something. I have coached sports I don't know how to play. I have taught skills that I just barely learned out, um, off of YouTube. I would help with my kids' ballet recitals even though I am not a dancer. They were looking for parent volunteers and so my job would be to stand on sort of kind of like human set dressing. I would stand on stage dressed as a man with a monocle and big mutton chops and a weird mustache and the girls would dance and I would make things look more realistic I guess. I don't know. Well one year I volunteered to be Madame Bon Bon. Madame Bon Bon is the one who wears the big giant fluffy dress and the cute little dancing ballerinas come out from under her dress. Well, my daughter was about four years old at the time and she was one of the little baby Bon Bons, so I volunteered to do this. My job was to slowly scoot out on stage while they were under the dress all crouched up and then we get to center stage and then as the music would start I would lift my skirt in time with the music and the little bonbon ballerinas would run out and they would do their dance and it was adorable. Well we rehearsed every Saturday for months, we rehearsed the whole week before, we did a couple of great performances and then it came time for the main performance that they were going to record and make the official DVD recording with a professional film crew. Well, we scooted out. I had to keep my feet really close to the ground so that I wouldn't risk stepping on the dancers. And as we settled into place, my heel rested down and I felt something under my foot. And I was thinking, please don't let that be one of the baby ballerinas. Well, the music started, I lifted my skirt and no one would come out. Turns out it had been one of the ballerinas. Luckily, it was my own daughter, my little baby ballerina. I had stomped on her little fingers. Well, she was the first one who was supposed to come out from under my dress. So none of the other little bonbons would come out because they knew that they were supposed to wait and come out after Ivy. So here I am on stage in front of hundreds of people and a professional film crew, and I'm bent over grabbing these girls and pulling them out from under my dress. My little bonbon, clung to me. I held her and swayed back and forth while she sobbed and sobbed on stage and refused to dance. The girls danced maybe about half of their dance and then we shuffled off stage while my daughter continued to cry. To say I was mortified is a massive understatement. I felt like hot garbage. I got looks from the other moms as they gathered their daughters after the show. I had pretty much destroyed the video recording. I had made my daughter cry on stage. I felt so terrible. I think the reason I hate moments like this so much is that it's shocking how a tiny moment like that can provide you with evidence that you are not the person you want to be, that you're not who you thought you were. I was trying to be a loving mother and a good community volunteer. And what I was, I mean, really, was a clumsy, baby ballerina stomper. I really was. I had to single-handedly ruin the Nutcracker for that year. And I felt so terrible about it. Now, that moment had the power to just bring me down and destroy me and make me not want to do anything ever again. And I think it's important to stop and think about what moments like that can do. Because to be honest, I have had more of those just self-revealing, challenging moments over the last year than I've ever had in my life. Some of them are caused because I made a mistake, like crushing my daughter's fingers in front of hundreds of people. But some of them have been just because things are hard right now and things aren't going the way I want them to go. Um, we have missed out on so many amazing opportunities, it feels like, this year. And as you're not doing those things, as you don't get to play the sports that you want to play or perform in the musical productions that you are rehearsing for and planning for, you don't get to do a lot of these big rites of passage that you would normally get to do senior year. The vision of yourself and of what your senior year would look like and what your freshman year of college would look like or your, your um, launch into your career as a recent high school graduate, all of these visions of what your life is have been altered. And when that happens, sometimes it makes you question who you are and whether you really 
are gonna be or achieve any of the things that you thought you would be or achieve. What I want you to think about as we're going forward, what I'm trying to focus on is the most important moment and the place where you have the most power. And that moment is right now. And that moment is the next moment after these things happen. So let's think back to the ballerina stomper example. If in that moment I have this evidence that I'm a terrible mother, that I'm an embarrassment and that I'm a bad volunteer and that I basically all around am a clumsy child squisher, I could just surrender to that and just say, that's who I am, I guess. I guess I just crush baby ballerinas. That's just what I do. And then I could just spend the next moment and the next looking around like, is there a baby ballerina around? I better go stomp on her. Now that seems completely insane when I say it like that, but there have been moments in my life I have had a similar thought pattern. Freshman year of college, I am not great at making friends all of a sudden. I was suddenly a small fish in a big pond and I struggled the first couple of times I tried to make friends. So I just kind of decided, I guess I'm not worthy of friendship. I guess when I go to college, people don't like me. And I kind of just hid out in my room and I did not put in effort. I didn't try to reach out. I didn't try to befriend other people. I just decided, I guess I'm not someone who makes friends. And I sort of really let myself down for my freshman year because of that choice. In that next moment after I had failed, if I had made a choice to just do a tiny bit of a reach out, you decide in those moments, what could I do that I would do that will help me be the person that I want to be? If one moment of doing the ballerina stomping could make me a ballerina stomper, stomper then one minute hugging my daughter, loving her, maybe photocopying some things at the elementary school, being a good volunteer. One little moment that I could do something that I'm willing to do and that I would do can prove that I am exactly who I think I am, exactly who I wanna be. One of my favorite spiritual teachers, Jeffrey Holland, has said, God doesn't care nearly as much about where we have been as he does about where you are now and where with his help you are willing to go. What you've done in the past is not where God's focus is on. He says, you can't change that. But what you can change is who you are right now. And it can be a tiny decision of just something to get you moving. All of those little tiny micro choices that you make now, regardless of what's happened over the past year, those are the things that are gonna create who you are. And each thing that you do that's in line with the truth of who you really are as a daughter or a son of God is gonna give you momentum and it's gonna teach you and reinforce to you that you really are that person and that you're really possible and capable and that you can do great things. I know that each of you has it in you to do amazing things. You might not have lived up to everything that you always thought you would get to do or that you would be capable of this year, but you are capable of everything. You're capable of it one step and then the next and then the next. You're in the process of changing and becoming. As you turn to God, as you exercise your faith in him and faith in yourself, as you believe him when he tells you that he loves you and that you are worthwhile, you will do amazing things in your life and they're going to seem small 95% of the time until you look back and realize that every large accomplishment is a thousand, ten thousand, a million tiny choices. So take the next moment and make it a choice that's who you really are. Be that person, even if it's for 10 seconds, and then be that person for another 10 seconds, and then do it again. And I know great things are in store for you. I'm so happy for you. Congratulations. I cannot wait to see what the next moment holds for you. Class of 2021.